Hey guys, so this begins my Destrahan Comic Con recap. And this is the Thursday before the show. I fly out tomorrow around 5, and the show is on Saturday from 1 to 4. I found out about this show attending ALAAC, the Librarians Conference, and I have a recap for that that you guys can check out. I found out about the show by talking to a librarian who works at Destrahan. Um, and she'd mentioned that show to someone else entirely, not even to me, but I latched on to it because that's how you find out about these smaller library shows. Now, for me, Destrahan Comic Con is not local. I currently live in Nashville, but it is dear to my heart or near and dear to my heart. And it was really important to me that I get there for its first show because I grew up in Luling, Louisiana, as you guys have known, and I went through the St. Charles Parish school system and Destrahan is part of St. Charles Parish. And I've talked about this a fair amount, how Luling and St. Charles Parish in general were not comic friendly. They had no resources to offer me. And when I was growing up, the library didn't really have a comics collection at all. In fact, after I self-published the first volume of 7-Inch Kara, I went to all the branch libraries to donate copies. And they just kind of disappeared for a while. Um... It took my high school friend Carrie Dewey, who works as a librarian now, to do some digging and they found out that they were just being held in special collections and that nobody knew about this Louisiana comic set in St. Charles Parish, aimed at kids, like nobody knew about it. So Carrie did some wonderful work in getting those comics actually out into the collection as it was designed to be. Um, so. I am really excited about this show. Um, I offered them workshops. I offered them panels. It took them a while to give back. They still haven't said anything about whether they want any of those. And since it's Thursday and I leave tomorrow, I unless they want me to just sit on a panel and talk, I can't feasibly provide any sort of meaningful art-related content for their attendees, which is a little bit of a shame, a little bit disappointing, because I know that area is still very starved for it, although they have a guest list that does list some Louisiana people. I don't know any of them, but I also left Louisiana in 2009 to go attend SCAD, and before then, I didn't really have access to any of the social groups that did comic-related stuff. Um, I don't know if it was because I wasn't a strong enough artist, people didn't think to recommend them, or they didn't know about those kind of resources, but before 2009, I didn't have any sort of comics community in Louisiana. Um, so this is by far not my first Louisiana show. I have done MechaCon, I had done MechaCon for every year for like seven years until last year, and I'm doing it again this year, and then I did Nokus Fest for every year, um up until it's from its inception. So I'd done Nokus Fest for like four years and I think I'm not gonna do it this year unless I'm living in Louisiana because these little shows flying back and forth, it's not feasible. Like I do not recommend you guys fly back and forth for these little library shows. It's just not worth it. You're gonna lose your shirt. But um, because I grew up in St. Charles Parish and because this is like their first real comics embracing attempt, I definitely wanna be there. And especially since I want to move back and teach in Louisiana, I think it's important that I start making those face connections, start doing that FaceTime. Um, because like here in Nashville, I have had the hardest time getting anyone to take me seriously. In fact, um, this summer I pitched a comics course for their fall curriculum. Since I haven't gotten any bites from Louisiana, I do have to make money. I do have to find some work somehow. Um, I, I pitched a 10-week comics course. I just got back from them. They are interested. They'd rather do it in six weeks, which is fine. But they strongly hinted that they don't pay their teachers, which it's like, well, that's that's dandy, Nashville. Thank you so much for another non-paying job opportunity. Um, I did actually respond and tell them that I can't afford to do it unless I can get some sort of a stipend. So we'll see. I would much rather be working in Louisiana, um, but if I don't get any job leads in Louisiana, I do need to work. So that's a little bit non sequitur, but I am excited for Destrahan Comic Con. This is gonna be a challenge because I'm gonna just stay in Louisiana the whole time. So that's going to make restocking things interesting. Um, since it's a library show in St. Charles Parish, I can't see my sales being bonkers, but that said, 
Um, when I did that show in Putnam County, I didn't think my sales were going to be very good, and they were good. And I did a show in um, Gallatin, which was surprisingly good, and I didn't think I was going to do that well. That's why I recommend that you guys do look into doing local library conventions. If your libraries are starting to do that, you should definitely try and take advantage of those opportunities. And the people who would typically know that information, especially if you have a larger library, would be the teen, set, the teen center would usually know about that, or the kid center would normally know about that. Um, Nashville itself, Nashville Public Library, <laughs> no interest in doing any of that, it seems like. But I'm fortunate that the libraries, like all the libraries about an hour out from me, like White House and Gallatin and Putnam County, are all very interested in that. They've got some really wonderful movers and shakers who want to make comics and comic craft more accessible to their audiences. In fact, I had a blast doing that zine workshop in Gallatin and, um, I was really excited to be offered the opportunity to be on a writer's panel because I do write my own comics um, and people don't think of comic artists as writers so it was cool to be the only comic person on that panel because the rest were doing like adult books on Kindle and, and one YA book on Kindle so it was cool to be like, I do comics, I do them in print and as a web format, I'm the one different person. So. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of hoping that I can make some good connections at the Destrehan Public Library. I'm hoping some of the area teachers, administrators, other librarians from other branches will attend and I get a chance to be like, hey, you do indeed remember me. I grew up here. No, I don't look the same. Yeah, I did come back. Yes, I am a professional comic artist. I said I would be and I did it. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of it is like, I want to come back and be like, I'm still doing that thing I said I was going to do that you guys laughed at me for doing. Um, but I also want to go to encourage all the people who are like baby back, who want to make comics and maybe they're not getting the resources they need to be like, hey, I release all these resources online for free because they weren't there for me when I was a kid and I want you guys to do this. I want to make this accessible for you guys. I want you guys to have success in this so you don't have to struggle the way I did. So um, that, I mean, that's why I do this, that's why I do How to Be a Con Artist, that's why I do the Natto blog, because I want to give something back um, and I want to leave a legacy for myself of helping people and I think that's the best kind of legacy to leave. Um, so I'm pretty excited about it. I'm definitely nervous because I'm having a very unusual packing situation. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about that, but I'm just going to give it my best. And when I, after the show, I'm going to kind of look over what I need to replenish and do that. Um, I did reorder Kara books. They're being delivered to my mom's house. So hopefully I need to ask her if those came in, but hopefully they came in because I'm out of Kara books. Um, I pretty much sold out of them at ALAAC, which is awesome, but you know, I need them now. Um, I think she's got like seven though. I think she said she had seven, which should be enough for like a little library show. Sometimes, um, the, at the Gallatin show, I sold 14 books, which in one day in like, a few, I was barely at the table cause I was doing two, two panels. Um, so that's phenomenal. That's an amazing, uh, community there. But uh, normally, like at MTAC, I'll sell 14 books the whole weekend because so many of my other things are more enticing to the audience. And it's a little bit disappointing, but I'm going to leave Thousand and One Nights at home because there's nudity and graphic language that I wasn't warned about. And my table is entirely kid-friendly, so it makes me intensely uncomfortable to have a book like that on my table with my kid-friendly stuff. And Joseph suggested I just make a label that says YA+. Plus, but... But then I get to explain to everybody that it's like the reason why it's YA+, and it's because of content I didn't even create that makes it YA+, and content I wasn't notified about that makes it YA+. So like, I would rather just leave it because I have a lot of, I already have like a lot of conflicting feelings about Thousand and One Nights, but... And it's not as good a seller as people would think. Like, for people who've heard about the project, and want to buy a specific book because a specific artist or several artists they like are in it, that's different. But as just like a cold sales item for people who don't really know you, it's not a good convention book. And I didn't get the library, um, what's the word, saturation that they had talked about doing. So I'm going to leave it. And I'm going I'm to be cool with it. Um, I am bringing 
Kara pages because I'm always bringing Kara pages and I'm also bringing a bunch of Kara pages to work on um, while I'm there. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. I fly out tomorrow. I'm going to unpack my suitcase tomorrow night and get my business figured out and reorganize and we're going to swing by my mom's storage unit to grab um, like I have grids over there. I have a lot of my con stuff in Louisiana also because I do a lot of Louisiana shows. Um, which will work out phenomenal when I move back because it's like all my stuff will be in one place. Um, but I'm not bringing a lot of my setup stuff and I can't bring my spinner rack because it literally won't fit in my red suitcase. And I can't break it down any more than it already is. So um, I'm not bringing that. I'm going to just have to make do with like plate stands. We might be hitting Dollar Tree really late at night tomorrow. My mom's a real sport. She's um, going to come with me and help me out. And uh, because at some shows, even at library shows, some shows I'll be popular enough that I need another person helping me. Like at the Gallatin Library. Um, like I said, I was doing two workshops, so Joseph manned the table for me, which I really appreciate. In fact, he made more sales than I did. People really like the idea of Joseph as the creator of 7-Inch Kara, and he always tells them he's not. Um, but they really, really like the idea of this cute, kind of short dude making this very sweet comic. And, uh, that we've joked for years about me being like, yep, yeah, he's the, he's the creator, I'm just the wife, you know? But, um, no. No, that's so not my brand. My brand is not to let someone else take credit for my work. But he does do a lot of work, and I do tell people um, that he edited the book. He's, And I'm usually very forthcoming about all the help he's given me because I want people to also understand that, like, the, the comic life I live, which is not a glamorous comic life by any means, is only possible because I have a partner who really believes in what I'm doing. And for people who don't have someone like that in their lives who are encouraging and supportive and willing to proofread their stuff and edit their stuff and talk to them about their stories, um, it's just, I think it's much harder. So, yeah. Anyway, that's like totally non-topic. I will see you guys maybe tomorrow when I'm going over what I'm going to bring to the show. But I'm definitely going to see you guys on Saturday with our Destrahan Comic Con, Library Comic Con, their first ever Comic Con with the recap for that. Hey, Artie friends, it is, well, my watch doesn't want to say, but it's a little past 11.15. We are heading out at 11.30 to drive 30 minutes down to Destrahan for the comic show that's going on today. In the background is my younger brother, Devin, and it wants to rain. So I'm hoping we can, kind of, we can get there and get everything in before the rain starts. But it officially starts at 1. I'm kind of hoping they'll let me set up early because it takes about an hour for me to set up. Um, but they haven't, I haven't received like much official correspondence with, um, that's Rami. Hey, Rami. Hey, Rami. Hey, pretty girl. I haven't received much official correspondence from the organizers with any sort of information. So I'm just kind of playing it by what I could find on Facebook and by ear. But this is their first show. So, you know, there's always a little bit of a learning curve with shows. Got to make a vet appointment for Miss Rems there this week. It's been a while. And even though she got her revolution this week, she's still an itchy, scratchy girl. So, I will see you guys at the show. Okay, we are at the brand new, kind of beautiful Destrahan Library. This is nice. This is <laughs> much nicer than the Lakewood branch. Look at this. They've got like a covered parking thing and like a glass area and they've got like beautiful lawn. So, this is this is where it's going to be at. This is the where the Comic Con's going to be at. All right, so this is my table. It looks like it's six foot wide, maybe a little shorter than two foot. It's nice and steel though. It's one of the nicest library tables I've ever sat at. And this is the room that they have the artist alley in. So it's right down this hall here, right from the front. And this is the hallway. So meeting rooms and restrooms straight down there is the artist alley. Hey guys. Destrahan, Louisiana, and it seems like people are really excited, which is awesome. 
I grew up in St. Charles Parish, and this is in St. Charles Parish, and I'm so excited to be here for their first comic show. I kind of broke into tears about this at my during my ALAAC recap. So I might cry, I might not, we'll find out. But this is my table. I showed you guys the walk inside. Would you do a 360 to show the other tables? good vibe in the room. I look forward to what the rest of this day has to offer. So I'll see you guys later. Hey Artie friends, I would have checked in with you guys at the show, but I was slammed. I was busy the whole time. My friend Domino came by to see me, which I super appreciate because that's a little bit of a drive for her and it was cool to see her. Um, she, and also Destrahan Comic Con was a better show for both of us to hang out than say MechaCon where I'm going to be crazy and busy, not just busy. Um, so that was awesome to get to see my friend. And um, I had my usual gaggle of teenage girls, which is always appreciated. Thank you so much for coming by. And it was a really good show for me to sell copies of 7-Inch Kara because it's located in St. Charles Parish. Uh, the show is located in St. Charles Parish. And my book is set in St. Charles Parish. So it's set in one of the towns in St. Charles Parish. So that was something I mentioned frequently and parents seem to like. Because like I've said in other con recaps, there's not a lot... Um, not a lot for kids in Louisiana that's set in Louisiana and there's probably nothing set in St. Charles Parish besides 7-inch Kara. So um, I definitely made sure to, make, to mention that but it was a really good show. I got to meet a lot of great kids. I got to meet a lot of young ladies, young girls who feel like they're alone, like they're the one, the one weird one in their school or group. So it was really nice to be like don't worry, you're gonna make more friends. You're gonna meet people who like what you like. They just haven't caught up to you yet. It was nice to be able to give them hope. And my brother is driving, so I hope I'm not distracting him. But we're heading out to go eat some po' boys, which is gonna be nice. We're going to parents. And I had a really good time at this show. I haven't done my numbers yet, and I was so busy at one point that I couldn't get all of my sales, so I'm only gonna be able to give you guys a ballpark number. But I definitely think if you are a Louisiana artist, and I've talked about this on this channel a lot, if you're a Louisiana artist, our opportunities are sometimes limited. So this would be a good show for you. It doesn't cost anything to table. Um, the librarians were extremely friendly, very, very nice. Um, very excited about this show. Um, it of course has a little bit of growing to do because it's a first year show at a library in an area that's never had their own con before. So I do recommend you be patient and you be kind and just keep in mind that they're learning and they are eager to learn and happy to learn. So just treat them with respect and kindness and you should do quite, quite fine. Um, the people are, so I heard somebody at ALAAC say that everyone here is gonna assume you're from Louisiana and you should just tell them you're from Louisiana. And I think that is a really, a really dick move. And I think that's kind of trashy. Um, please don't lie to people from Louisiana because um, the reason they assume you're from Louisiana is we don't get a lot of people who aren't tourists to go get drunk on Bourbon Street. Like, like mm, tourists don't go to Destrehan unless it's to the plantation. So they, have no reason to expect someone not from the area to be here because we don't get a lot of people from other places here. So don't lie to them because they're excited to see you're a comic artist and they're looking for role models for their kids. That was a big one. So many parents, which is so touching for me, 
were like, my daughter draws comics and it's amazing to see so many female comic artists here. So these are parents who are looking for role models for their kids. Don't lie to them. Um, so I know that's like, a, like, I don't lie about where I'm from. So please don't lie about where you're from just to make a sale. It's not worth possibly poisoning that connection with someone. It's not worth lying to someone. So, but it was a good show. And if you're a Louisiana or a Mississippi native, I think, and you, you're willing to make the, the trip, I think it's worth it just because the people are really nice and I look forward to seeing it grow and I really hope I can be part of helping it to grow next year. I am looking to move down here again. I'm trying to find steady work. So hopefully I can be even more involved with it next year in whatever capacity they are willing to have me. I would be happy to give my time and my talents. It really, really means a lot to me to be able to do a show here in St. Charles Parish. When I was in high school, I know it's, it's to harp like that, but I was like really the weird kid and nobody understood me and wah, wah, wah. But like a lot of that came from, I was weird to be fair, but also a lot of it came from me doing comics and people assumed comics were for children and me being an anime and people assuming that was just all porn. Um, so I'm so excited people to see. People still think it's all porn. Well, nobody today thought that at all. I know, but nobody I mean, there. If you get a guy that's, that's my brother in, in, in public, they might think, oh, they like, say it's a big muscly guy or. Uh, Dad, this somebody. is going on my channel. Well, I'm just saying, somebody people who do still not interested in anime would think it's still porn because that's you know, all they know about it. Yeah. From. So um, that was yeah. Like so, when I was in high school, one of our we wanted to have an, an anime club or a manga club or a comic club. We were not super picky about which. And I think some of my other friends wanted to have Magic the Gathering club um, for after school, like an after school activity where you could have snacks and you could do fundraising, that kind of cool stuff. And we had to pitch it to Winona Champ Champagne. Was that Winona Champagne? For what? Well. We had to, I'm pretty sure it was her. We had to pitch this to one of the vice principals and oh, yeah, she it shut it down so hard. She was like, no, that's porn, that's filth. And there were teachers who were like, no, it's not. Like so a couple of the art teachers actually were willing to vouch. Um, and that was not good enough. Like that wasn't good enough, right? So like, it's nice to be able to do a Comic Con they here. Had, they, Hong Kong had a uh, con, uh, anime club Last year, I was What? Like, they would never know. Who was the sponsor? So, I forgot who, but I just know that Brittany Brandon and them were in it. That's cool. Went one time. That's cool. You know, I'm just happy to see things change. I bring up how bad they were in the past because it's to, to highlight how far this has come. And I'm really happy that I can be part of it in any way. I mean, I'm not the one pushed. I'm not the one in the trenches pushing for change. That's the people who've stayed here that are doing that. So I don't want to take any credit for that because that's not mine to take. But I am happy to help in any way I can. And I'm happy to make comics in St. Charles Parish, about St. Charles Parish, as long as I can make a living doing it. I'm happy to do that. So anyway, I had a really good time, as you guys can tell. I'll check in with you guys with my final totals. And I'll see you guys again when I do my MechaCon recap in like two weeks. Hey guys. So I am hanging out with my mom right now. I kind of looked at my numbers. Um, I couldn't, like I told you guys earlier, I missed writing down a lot of sales. So, because things got really busy. So, um, I don't have a good final total for you guys. I think I sold, I think I sold over a hundred, probably over 150. Um, how many copies of care? Like, I don't know how many you brought with you. I know. I. Why didn't you write I that had down? How, how many, many I brought many with you? How many you have left? I don't. What? Well, then you're going to have to go back yeah. to your account because you've ordered Real 25. good with inventory. Um, I know I sold at least the seven that were in your room. Yeah. So that was, that's not bad. It Even if it was just sale. that, uh, seven for like what? From one to four yeah. is not bad yeah. at all. That's pretty good. Pretty concentrated. Um, and, and there you was no. Also sold a lot of those laser cut. Um, I did sell a lot of charms, charms. a few hand painted charms. Um, a lot of parents would buy one for everything, every every one of their children. Um, and if they didn't, I would throw in extras to make sure their kids, like every kid, got something. Because I know the kind of bickering and 
an anger that comes from like someone got something and everyone didn't get something so I would throw in stickers or something to kind of even it out or let um, the, uh, if there was just two kids and they were buying one book you know the care book comes with one charm I would let them pick two charms out um, just so that both kids had that something so it doesn't turn into like a source of bickering so that the parent doesn't like because I don't want the parents memory of the transaction to be well they ended up fighting over the charm you know so I don't know if that helps or not um, I sold a few anyway. mini prints not too too many not too many stickers which is nice because those are I mean I sold a few but they're, they're smaller things and they do require time so I need to figure out a self-serve thing with the mini prints somehow because that ends up taking, as I'm digging for mini prints, that ends up taking time. And it's hard because I don't know which ones are in which boxes. Yeah, yeah. And Without I. Without going through each individual I still have box. to, too. Yeah. And I try to keep it organized yeah, but and I still have to. When they say through. they want this character, yeah. you know what they're talking I about. Do. I do. I know who they're clue. looking for. Um, so if I can figure out a self serve way to do, I might buy, eventually, I might buy a. Um, you know what you could do? Like those baseball card collector books and just put like five of the designs behind it and just be like go ahead and take one and then when it runs out of that oh, design, what I was thinking I is it. that on on the the thing where you show the different ones mm -hmm. do you have something that show put a I, number them and then yeah, number the box like, I like like the, if you've got four different prints or if you got five different prints put one two three four yeah. five I should do that. Um, the reason I haven't... If I knew which box it was in, that would yeah. make it easier to zero in. The reason I don't is because the print Walmarts do that. And I try to... Dip. The people who have like the huge print walls and they have nothing well, that's, that's original. That's why they do it. I know. That's why they do it. Find I know. And the reason I didn't is because I didn't want it to feel like that. But it makes it easier but for, for you. But for those prints when you but have I so think, many different I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to... It's going to be a lot of table space. But I think I'm going to get... I'm going to try to put multiples of the print in behind the example so I can tell them just, just go ahead and pull it. what you want pull from the one. book. Yeah. 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 And that way I don't have to, um, I don't have to search except like once every, until we've run out of that print. So I think that's what I'm going to do. But if you put a number on the side of the print. Yeah. Number, that'll also help also you refill it too. Help to, yeah, yeah. Refill it and also. Or lab, just label the names and then you can find the names on the boxes. Yeah, I need Thank better you know. organization for that. So that's something because I'm going to do before my The Mecca. name may change. You may put, eventually put a different print in that slot. Yeah, but the numbers but don't you necessarily. Them, the numbers don't have to change. That's you true. You just have to put them in that box. Anyway, we're going to figure it out. Yeah, so we're going to figure it out. Something more efficient. And I want that. something better to organize my mini. I might look for something at Walmart. I, I don't think MechaCon will let me have a print whack on the ground, which is what I usually, depending on the print show, whack. yeah, it's like um like a gallery style, like one of those folding print things that like fine artists will sometimes have at craft fairs to display their, to sell like their prints. Mm -hmm. You If you if you saw it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I don't think MechaCon will let me put that on the floor. No, so I got to figure something out with that. And if it was something, be something that would be knocked over all the time. Yeah. That would be bad. Yeah. So... Was, I like. I thought it was a good show. Yeah, I, think I think so too. People who live in the area should come and table at the show, yeah. especially from one to four. And, and even and if you, you know, live an hour they away, will, did they have somebody from the St. Charles West St. Charles Herald Guide? Did they have somebody out? I have no doing, idea. I have no idea. That would be surprised. nice. That would have been a good. Thing. It would have been. It would, have been, it would have been. They could have done interviews of like the area artists. That an idea yeah. get the paper to come out it'll give them something to talk about it's something local to be proud of it's area adults and teenagers doing stuff so that could be an avenue to consider instead well, of just reporting sports I'll say I you know it had a lot of I, I thought it was very well represented yeah, there was a, a very well for, put for together me, cosplay was table Orleans. who was doing, they were doing wig demonstrations, which was really yeah. impressive. And she was really sweet. She came over and introduced herself. Um, Who's that? I forgot her name. One of the librarians? No, one of the girls. She's she's part of like the cosplay oh, okay. guild. Okay. So well. she came and introduced herself early on and she seemed really sweet. And we were talking about how, how the area, how cosplay in the area has changed. And how sent how like people react to this kind of stuff has changed here in this area. Um, let's see, the five oh first, the the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
the um well don't you have star I think you have, awards I cosplayers? think you have the brochure in your bag in your okay suitcase. maybe this is this is a con recap that I'm going to share with people so they can decide whether or not this is a show that would be worth their while I've been trying when I do stuff in Louisiana I try to make sure I give it coverage I've done it with Nocus Fest as well just because so many people complain like oh I, it's like with Tennessee oh I never hear about anything and it's like well it's not for lack of trying yeah so. it's not going to be a show that's that's composed of professional vendors that's not the kind of show it is but it is a family show it's a definitely teenage local neighborhood show and it's definitely a child show yeah so, so if you have um kidlit stuff it's a good opportunity if you are a parent who has an intrepid teenager who's an artist this would be a really good first con for them um, because it's very low key, the organizers are very nice. It doesn't cost anything, and it's only a few hours. And so parking it's, is very easy. Parking is easy and free, yeah. and it's not hard to get to. It's not like it's downtown or anything like that. You don't have to worry about that. So this would be a really good one for your first show. Um, I think me and Alexis had grid wall, and no one else did. So it's not like you have to have this big elaborate display. Um, and I didn't get a chance to walk around and see what other people were selling, which is my fault. But, um... Oh, you were busy the whole I time. I was busy the whole and time. And you were talking to parents about, um, your book? And also about their kids being interested in, in comics. Art. That's yeah. a lot of what I saw as parents whose oldest child is, was 12. There was like five of them. I, had a, I should have had them all just hang around so their kids could meet each other and be friends. Because mm -hmm. it was a bunch of parents of daughters who were about 12. They didn't know each other at all. Um, who all kept saying, you know, my little girl, my daughter really needs to see this because she thinks she's the only one. Or she, none of her friends are into this. Mm -hmm. Or she really loves to draw and she doesn't know anybody who does it. So... Um, that's still a, th a problem and I mean I think it's always gonna be a problem but maybe they don't have to feel so lonely because these shows do provide an opportunity for them to get right. to know each with, other with a show that is so close to home in st. Mm -hmm. Charles Parish they could be it's friends very, and then hang out and it's very easily accessible yeah and I think it's a great way to start it's a great way to introduce parents to something like this without overwhelming them to the big cons in the big cities. Give me a sec, because... I'm going to bring my umbrella in. Okay, so it's it's mom approved. It was not super overwhelming. Um, it was a little overwhelming for my aunt, who is not having well, some health sick. issues right now, but she was able to sit behind the, whole, the table the whole time, and it is a quiet library, so if you have some accessibility issues and you don't mind chilling out alone for a while... Um, it's not a bad show either. Like, I don't... MechaCon's going to be interesting, is all I've got for that. It always is. Yeah, it's always interesting. All right, so that was Destrahan's first Comic Con. I think it went really well. I'm really proud of them. I'm excited to see how it grows. If you are an area artist, I think you should come out. I would love to see them develop it, develop it as the years go by. I would love to be part of helping to develop it. This is my lovely mother, and I'm Becca. I will see you guys at the MechaCon Recap. Bye.